Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 Millennium Dawn with me, Alpha Pi Omega and Iran. So, the date is 8th of September 2003 and I'm happy with the progress we are making. It is hard work, uh, we have to manage a lot of moving parts at the same time, but I do see bright future for Iran. At around 2005, I plan to have a little review of where we started and where we are right now, so that we can actually see the fruits of our labor. But until then, we can just roll forward with the Kangiran gas field at this point, and a potential for more shenanigans. Uh, how's the fleet upgrades going? Oh, we're fine. We're fine. They're gonna take a while. They are going to take a while. So the Tehran Seman um, construction is gonna be done in just a couple of days. Actually, less than two weeks, which is good. We're gonna get additional factory. And we are moving uh, through to the Astan Kutsarazabi which will lower the, cast, the tax cost by 2% and then we can work our way down to cracking on the drug smuggling which will actually lower our corruption to modest corruption which is... I'm actually completely happy with keeping it there. That is really, really good. But I don't know if we require one of the following. Ah, okay, so we don't have the... We don't need to have anything, we can just go with this one, summon a freeway, that might be good too. But I think that after we're done with this, we can turn our attention back to the genetics tree, because those are small bonuses, but they stack up pretty nicely. Especially the health cost is pretty good, because I think I already mentioned it before, but jumping up in the health department is something that we should really focus on. Especially because it lowers the tax cost and it gives us extra monthly population and also stability, but the costs are really goddamn high. So, any percentage that we can get reduced there is going to be pretty good. But, you know, with the medium corruption being lowered to modest corruption, we're gonna get additional 2% in tax revenue. And I think that we are getting additional 2% in tax revenue from one of the focuses here. Yeah, you are giving us, actually 3%, okay. So that's additional 5% for us, and we can be happy with that. That's, that's you know, that's quite a lot, 5%. That might be like half a billion every uh, month, at which point we can actually maybe even, even invest in it, because the civilian population is now already increasing by 6,000 people per month. And we definitely do want to increase it further. Okay, so the Kaibar has been finished. And we can now start working on the Fajr 224. The Fajr 224 rifle is an Iranian unlicensed copy of the American M4 rifle with several additions from the original. So, 307 days. Here we go. And we're going to start putting you into production. 71,439 infantry weapons need to be upgraded. Amazing. That is just amazing. But the GPRS is working. Okay, we influenced Iraq once again. And microcomputing is being done. And the inorganic fibers fabric. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're getting better in everything. It's not like we are not. Okay, 7.47, that's actually pretty good. For such a short time, we are gaining quite a lot of influence. Okay, one of the factories have been finished. So we now have 25, which only a couple are being used, three to be quite honest, are used for the tax cost. Uh, we're gonna be paying for this, are we? Yeah, 12 billion. Okay, let me just borrow the necessary money. This hurts in my meow meows. 41.2%. Uh, well, 412 million is pretty good. So the Kangiran gas field is done and we can move down to Astan Kutz Razavi. 
Astar Kutrazavi is an Iranian charitable trust bunyad based in Mashhad, Iran. The organization is the caretaker of the shrine of Imam Reza and is one of the most important organizations in Iran, owing owning 15 billion in assets within our borders. While the organization has spread from simply being shrine caretakers to a conglomerate, they can be used as recruiters as well to draw the, de the devout into our army. So again, extra recruitable population, lower tax costs, increased tax revenue and daily emerging support and changing the popularity of emerging. Now, there is a mention here of a charitable trust called Boniad. Boniad Bonyads are one of the worst things in the Iranian economy, to be quite honest. Imagine, uh, how would I describe it even? Uh, I've read a lot about them. Bonyads are, as was mentioned, uh, national organizations fully owned by Iran, but they don't need to uh, have any accounting. Uh, they are not even declaring their income and expenses at all. They are fully funded by the state, which makes them an ideal place where you can, uh, or with which you can reward the people that are faithful to the regime. So not only are they a huge source of corruption, they're also a huge, um, huge detriment to uh, foreign investment in Iran. Because if you imagine that you, for example, want to open, and that, that's a great example that I once heard, you want to open a hotel in Iran. But as a foreigner, you need to make all the paperwork, you need to employ the people, pay everything, and have an exact tax uh, declaration, you know, you need to make everything work. And then a boniad comes around and opens the same hotel. Not only do they not need to adhere to any uh, regulations like paying taxes or declaring what they're using the money for, but they're fully state-owned. They can sink money into building six hotels around you and destroying your property. It's it's insane. It's a really... Uh, it is a really predatory, uh, predatory organization in a sense. Well, they play a huge role. I think they own like 30% of Iranian economy actually. So they are a large-scale problem, and they are one of the main sources of corruption as well. But they are an integral part of the society. So the fact that we are reducing the corruption may, uh, in a major way in Iran would actually mean, in effect, that these bonyas would have to go away or be transformed into regular trusts or companies. But uh, that's obviously not going to happen. But just so you know what the bonyad is, it's a really interesting concept. Uh, that's coming out of, uh, I think, the um, the Sharia law. It's connected to it somehow, but um, you know that's that's beyond uh, my knowledge. Gulf states signed joint defense agreement. The leaders of the member states of the Gulf Cooperation Council have agreed to sign a landmark agreement that represents the most significant step forward in terms of GCC military cooperation in decades. The agreement commits all member states to come to the aid of a GCC member state that comes under attack from an external threat. However, foreign analysts have pointed out that this agreement was not complemented by any real effort to integrate the various armed forces on the GCC which retain separate chains of command, institutional culture and types of equipment. The GCC is therefore a long way away from reaching the level of cohesiveness of a full military alliance. Interesting. I'm not sure if that is connected to us in any tangible way, but maybe it is. Who knows? And suppose sixty percent. Country outlook, emerging outlook. Interesting. I guess the next elections are going to see the current president re elected. Oh, we can actually do something. Uh, something that I haven't seen. Oh, the supervision. Because stability. Okay, let's get to that because the stability is pretty good for us. 
And we're already seeing some positive effects here. Political power gain increased, tax costs lowered, factory output and docker output increased. Nice, 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 nice. Afghan Northern Alliance took five states. Oh, Afghanistan has been united. The Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan was the next. So who won? The non-aligned, okay. Bur Burhanuddin Arabani. Non-aligned. So the Salafists have been uh, defeated. The Afghan government have declared victory of the Taliban. The majority of strongest outposts and cities have been cleared of their presence. Well, it's probably victory over the Taliban. And the majority of strongest outposts and cities have been cleared of their presence. And most of what fighters remain have escaped across the border to Pakistan. Though the Taliban are reduced to only a few pockets and cells, the insurgency is projected to last many years to come. Albeit in lower levels. The victory has shown the effectiveness of the rebuilt Afghani army and the resolve of the Afghani government. Okay. Our influence in Iraq has increased to nearly 10%. Good. Continue. Okay, let's start repaying slightly. It's not like we're gonna make a big dent into that, but you know, every little piece counts. Okay, so we're paying more for the police. We are down to about a quarter of a billion every week. But the GDP is at 1.2 trillion now. Pretty good. This income is at 9, uh, 9 billion every week. That's pretty good. The economy is flourishing. And the Astan Kutsarazavi is now finished. Which should, yep, that bumped us by about 200 million every week. And we can continue with safeguarding the eastern border, that's 20 days. Uh, to stability, we get increased opinion with Afghanistan, Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, okay, that one doesn't exist anymore, Turkmenistan and Pakistan, and then we can crack down on drug smuggling. The eastern border of our country is fairly large and is surrounded by unstable nations whose people frequently cross our unguarded border illegally, bringing with them a drug trade of opium from Afghanistan, who is the largest producer of opium near us. We must guard this border to stop these unwanted elements from entering our country. 2% stability, pretty damn good. Make a change. Okay, so did we get... No, we still have... The well, the tax loss is only 8% now, but it's still three factories. But with the increase of stability that's coming and that we have through the investment that we're doing right now, we might soon lower it to two factories. I mean, I'm playing with this tax cost in mind now, mostly because every factory counts, but uh, you know, it's two factories or three factories now, but in the future it's going to be 10 Maybe 20, who knows? You know, it's gonna snowball pretty quickly. Okay, how's our spy numbers? Okay, you got 81% already. And you got 48%. So let's check on Iraq again. What can we learn? Okay, so we have a precise number of their factories seven civilian and five military. So they are much weaker than we are. I still don't know about their divisions, but they got infantry division, mechanized AI. Armored Brigade, AI Militia, Special Republic Guard, and Fedai and Saddam Unit. They have no navy. Well, they're landlocked. Wait, are they or are they not? No, they are not. They actually have... Wait, no, this is all... No, it's... Okay. They are not landlocked. Okay. Uh, but they don't cultivate any navy. They got about 40 airplanes. They got albatrosses, those are checkpoints. Aero L39C albatross. That's a that's a white jet from my home country. They're repaying their debt probably. Their GDP is 325 billion. Compared to us, they are yeah, they're falling behind really quickly. So spending the influence on them is pretty good. What about you guys? Do we see more? Nope. 
Uh, not yet. So what can we do with Iraq? Can we play with them a bit? So we can infiltrate civilian administration. But infiltrate the army or navy. And we would need two agents. We don't have an extra agent here. Counter intelligence. Okay, so the Overseas Recruitment Center would give us an extra agent slot. Which is something that we do want. How long will this take? 75 days and 10 factories. Jesus Christ. I'm not doing that at this point. We're gonna wait. Once we get 10 factories, I'm probably gonna do it because we need more agents. We might even do two full cycles to get four agents. One that would help with the operations and one extra that would infiltrate, infiltrate Israel. But I'm not doing that right now. That's just nonsense. Okay, putting more trains. Putting more rifles. Tanks, Mars, and Isfahans. Only 79 Isfahans are missing. It's pretty good. So the extra stability, and now we can crack down on drug smuggling. The opium trade that has been occurring between our border and Afghanistan had been an issue for the longest time. But now with the development of defenses on the border, we can finally crack down on the illegal smuggling ring directly. Yes, reduce everything. And we can get another Blue Water Navy Doctrine. Submarine attack and convoy rating efficiency. Torpedo cooldown. Missile submarines and attack submarines. Well, we're trying to increase our range into a Blue Water. So far from home, we'll increase our naval max range by 40%. So let's get that. The main goal of our fleet is to operate far from our shores. Extensive networks of logistics and connection to our global satellite network is imperative to ensure the maximum amount of operational integrity around the globe. Yep. I really do not know how far they can reach this point. Well, okay, with that 40% we can reach the West and East Indian Ocean with corvettes. That's the big part with corvettes not with a destroyer but a corvette a tiny little dinky corvette okay so we're gonna take the two billion that we have here and are we really paying that much for police air force Oh, is it this one? Intercontinental security. Oh yeah, that's the police. Okay, so yeah, well, 10% of that is 140 million. So that definitely is not a right investment. So, like, I get it. I get it. Oh, hey! Nice! With the increase in stability, we now have one extra factor available. Well, that's how you do it! That's how you do it. Okay, so what about Iraq? Malaysian election, what's the influence there? 10. Okay, it's increasing. It's increasing. I'm thinking we might start improving relations. Uh, it's gonna tank our political power significantly. But... It is necessary. We need 30% influence. With you, we would now have roughly 16. Well, okay, the coup would now have a 24% chance of success. Uh, opinion. Economic aid. United Islamic Republic. Well, we can get them. I'm not gonna go through this, to be quite honest, to the end. So we can support the Shia party and the influence maximum. These two. So, Jesus Christ, sixty billion. 
So we must be somewhere around 24% before we go through that. Bam earthquake. Bam earthquake struck the Kerman province. The shock had a moment magnitude of 6.6. Wow, that's actually pretty high. The earthquake was particularly destructive in Bam, with the death toll amounting to at least 34,000 people until now. We must be prepared for possible aftershock. Send the army personnel there to handle the situation. The current martial law until the situation calms down. Move capital to Isfahan. No, the current martial law until the situation calms down. We're gonna sacrifice 200 political power, but base stability is gonna increase by 5%. Which, again, is very nice for us in the end. The people need peace. Oh, and here we go! I'm gonna crack down on drug smuggling. I'm so giddy. I'm so giddy. And this one would give additional tax costs and construct. Yeah, we have to do this one as well. And then we're gonna be done. Attract investments from our neighbors. 15 billion, but. That doesn't matter with the increase in revenue, but probably my guess is oh my guess is we're gonna jump up to about a billion per week. Well no, it's gonna be three percent, so about eight hundred million per week. Roughly. Give or take. No, well, I thought it would be better, but still, this is amazing. This is amazing. So next, let's do this one. Attract investments from our neighbors. To attract investments from neighboring nations, these foreign countries require space to develop, which we must provide if we are to have them come. This will require various land clearing and land reposition efforts, but it will ultimately be worth it. So we get, wow, one building sought in... Almost all of our... Or do we have 13 regions? I actually don't know. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so in all of our regions we get an extra build slot. That's actually pretty good. And Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan and some others will start investing in us. And we get public service investment. Grants tax cost lower by 5%. Tax revenue, extra 5%. Construction speed increased by 10%. Amazing. So this is gonna, you know, jump our economy up to the skies. Monthly auto influence. Okay, we have to be more careful with the political power spending now. Because we are dropping a bit. But this one is done in 23 days. And at that point... We're gonna start increasing by about 0.5 per day. Yep. And that's good. I mean, we can keep influencing Iraq. With the 6%, we would now jump up to about 20. Target others' influence. Give economic aid. Does this? You can target those influence, but nobody really has any. So. Attempt a coup. Turn it into a puppet then. Well, if we turn it into a Shia state and get them into our sphere of influence and ally with them, I'm gonna try to uh, turn them into a puppet. Aung San Suu Kyi released. After an extended period of resistance, the military government has finally caved into local and international pressure to release Aung San Suu Kyi from house arrest. This momentous decision follows the release of other prominent opposition participants. Okay, Burma is starting to look like a better place to live. Okay, we pay a bit of this debt. Okay, our debt to GDP is back to roughly 30%. 
And we probably just finished the factory. Nope, but we're gonna finish military factory very soon. And look at that, we get nine factories working on it. Soon we're gonna start getting more operatives. Speaking of which, you can start quieting this network down. Oh. Oh, you can't? Quiet. I found that you can... No, you're still burning it, and I would like you to... Ah, you're gonna have to... You can quiet someone else's network, okay. Well, let's keep you at 100. It's actually pretty good. We get a nearly 60% civilian intel and 44% on the military intel. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Saddam, we are on to you. We're running most of your secrets. Look at that. We're getting more, almost 800 million per week. Which is mostly because we finished this one. Yep, and now our info, political power is increasing. Good. We got Iraq at nearly 16%. Central Bank of Iran warns of possible housing bubble. Great. Dear Said al Hosseini Khamenei, we regret to inform you that a sizable portion of our expert team, the best and brightest Iranian economists, are spotting early signs of the Iranian housing market in, is overheated and could be heading towards a bubble that's ready to burst. Keep in mind that predicting the future is difficult and hard work, so it may be that our experts are wrong. We would, of course, never dream to give you excellency orders on what to do, but making some adjustments now would be less painful than a full-blown crisis in the future. Let's cool down the markets. We spend 25 billion and 40% chance we drop from fast growth to stable growth. And 60% chance that Bazaar is going to increase its book premium. Enough nonsense. We are healthy. Ah, uh, well, okay then. Let's cool down the market. It's 24 billion and a chance to lose the stable growth. Haha, -ha, we succeeded! Nice. Uh, though, the fact that we just increased our debt by 25, nearly 25 billion should be worrying me, but... Eh. Uh, oh no. Oh no, we dropped the stable growth. Uh, okay, but the bazaar likes us more and we can take it. I mean, we're, we're still... Even with stable growth, we're getting... Nearly 300 million, so that's pretty good. And I think that the investments from our neighbors giving us extra tax revenue of 5% are gonna cover that. So we should jump back to about... Uh, about... The 800 million that we were getting. The issue with the construction speed though, 25%, that's a big difference. Okay, so where are we gonna put that military effect? I think I'm gonna put it on the small arms, because that is something that we have been working towards. And let's put the other factor in there as well. So the investments from our neighbors are done. Wow, where did we get that 16? Oh, okay, we... Uh, did we pay? Oh yeah, we paid 15 billion. Okay, so our debt is now nearly 33%. But the weaker income is 725 million, which is pretty good. We have a tax cost of zero, 2%. So we get 11 factories now working on the military factory and 15 working on the Ransomon civilian factory. So that means that I can now go ahead and get the Overseas Recruitment Center, which is going to give us extra agent slot. Happy to get that. And we can... Stun and Valkistan. We don't want that. The 
25 billion now would be beneficial, but it's not something that we need like right now. So let's instead turn our attention to the Royan Research Institute, which is going to increase our research speed by 2%. And we'll call it an episode. The Royan Institute is an Iranian clinical research and educational institute dedicated to biomedical, translational, and clinical research, stem cell research, and infertility treatment. Established in 1991, then approved by Ministry of Health as cell-based research center in 1998, the center has done many groundbreaking achievements thanks to Iran's liberal laws on cell cell research. Nice. So we get a bonus to the next um, wait, will we manage? Because if I want to get the next uh, genetic engineering, 641 days. 40 days, okay, so we'll manage that. Cool, and we'll get a 2% boost to our research, which is now at 40%. And microcomputing is going to be done soon. So we're going to effectively jump to minus 33. Okay, okay, we're doing it. An extra military factory for our rifles as well. So we're producing 10 per day, which is, you know, <laughs> an improvement. And yeah, modest corruption, stable growth. But I'm going to hope that we can get the fast growth soon. If not, I might consider spending... Jesus Christ, 94 billion. Well, the economic boom might be good too, but... 780 political... Yeah, no. We're gonna focus on Iraq for now. The influence is 14%. Yeah, we're doing good. Still, we are doing amazing. So thank you very much for joining me now. See you in the next episode.